Hey everybody, Matt Siltala with Avalanche Media here alongside Dave Rohr with Northside Metrics. Uh, looking forward to talking to you again on another one of these Business of Digital podcasts. Now today's topic, this is one that Dave and I are really passionate about because we see so many businesses that do it right, yet we see so many that do it oh so wrong. And what are we talking about? We're going to be jumping into the world of customer service with social media and um Hopefully more of, of the good and how you can do it uh, the, the right way, um, especially closer to the holiday seasons. And, and you know, I mean, it's, it's important to do it all seasons, but we're getting close to the holiday seasons and just paying attention to what's going on when people are just, you know, this is this is crunch time for a lot of people and their purchases and things like that. And so um, with that said, I'm going to pass the torch over to Dave and let him kick us off on this one. And uh, how's it going, Dave? Pretty good, sir. How are you? I'm doing excellent today. Another fine day to be doing one of these uh, podcasts. It is a nice fall day, and it is not raining or storming, so I will take it. <laughs> it's not 100 degrees here in Arizona, so I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, the um, I'll just jump in, but the... I'm sure we could have talked about this topic at any point, and we can probably even talk about it multiple times in the future. But an episode that just happened, is it this week? This past week or so? Um, where I got tired. I have, I, I don't drink a lot of pop, and I probably still drink more than I should, but I have an affinity for Pepsi Max yes. because it doesn't, it's not syrupy, but it's also not diet tasting. Um, I wish it had less caffeine because it has more caffeine than Mountain Dew. Well, I was about to say, and it has lots of caffeine. I mean, come on. Yeah. Max. I, I, <laughs> I, I wish it had much less, but it does not. Um, and I went on Twitter finally, and I've had conversations with Michelle Robbins. She's like, you know, yelling at me about something because I complained multiple times. I've taken pictures at Target and I've taken pictures at the Mariano's by my house and some other places. And I'm like... There, it's supposed to be here, but it's not. Yeah. And so finally, um, I took some pictures the other day, but just some quick stats. And I know no one likes stats, but just to hammer home, you know, that I'm not the only person that has a Twitter account or Facebook account and out there complaining. Um, this is from Social Media Today. It's from a couple months ago, but it's one in three social media users prefer social media customer care services to telephone or email. Um, I've dealt with Xfinity and most recently when I had some plane issues, um, there was the fires out in San Francisco, out by San Francisco, my plane got completely canceled. Um, and there were some issues, but then also I had problems with my luggage being lost at Charles de Gaulle, um, which is why I'm never flying through Paris again. <laughs> but I remember you that know, I was, I was tweeting and you know, complaining because they lost my luggage. I've been trying to call people. I was trying to figure out who it was, Latanza, and like all these different things. So, I mean, I've had it like three times in just a couple of weeks. Um, 67% or so of consumers now use social media networks like Twitter and Facebook to seek resolutions for issues. The number of people that I see talking to airlines, Xfinity, AT&T, um, Sprint, you know, Verizon, um, uh, what's the, the, the Comcast digital type, uh, is it Ranger? Oh, yeah. Um, up in Canada, I forget who it is. Um, or screaming at, you know, Tim Hortons because they're Starbucks for whatever reason. Um, customers spend 20 to 40% more with companies engage and respond to customers. That makes no sense. I'm reading that. Um, but basically, customers will spend more time with you as a company if you engage and respond to them via social media. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, it does. Um, nearly 70% of consumers have said that they've used social media for issues to do with customer service on at least one occasion. 70%. That's quite a few. Yeah, that is. Um, so one in three prefer it over telephone or email because... I mean, who wants to talk to anyone? Now. <laughs> well, yeah people, yeah, people don't want to talk to it, but you also don't want to talk to the robot. You also don't want to talk to the system and tell it five different things and then have to tell the person the same exact thing. That drives me crazy. That also reminds me of the uh, image that you shared into a our funny group at uh, uh, on Facebook. You shot, I'll share it with this group here about uh, reasons why I won't answer the door. It could be applied to social oh, media yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
and yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. But my most recent story is I am tired of not getting my Pepsi Max. <laughs> <laughs> Give him his Pepsi uh, Max. Every week, literally eight out of ten times now, I will go to, and I'm totally throwing the brands under the bus. I did it on Twitter, so I can do it here. Um, Target. They have one or two little, like all of this pop. And I know I shouldn't be drinking pop, um, but they have all this pop there. And they have like one little rack for Pepsi Max, which I understand shelf space, you know, Pepsi pays for it, yada, yada. But they have one little thing and it's got six bottles. And like eight out of 10 times, it'll be gone because there's just a couple bottles. And maybe people are um, annoyed that it's always gone. So they're when they see it there, they grab them all, leaving you people like you screwed. Well, and we just went there this weekend, and they actually had it, so I'm very happy this week. <laughs> it was it was five bottles for five dollars, so I bought four. There's they left two. <laughs> <laughs> like one person walked in and bought the entire thing. Yeah, that's funny. Like, um, but eight times out of ten, seven times, nine times out of ten at my local Target, and there's two Targets we go to, and luckily I went to a different one this week, and they had it. Um, but I also then go to our grocery store where we buy most of our groceries every week. Most times lately, they're gone. And I literally took a picture where someone had taken the Diet Pepsi and restocked it to fill where the Pepsi Max went. And then I took a picture with that, and then I moved it to where the Pepsi Max is supposed to be and took a picture, and I posted that online. Yeah. Um, I, I tweeted at Mariano's, which is you know, a decent-sized grocery store, and Target. And I also yelled at my local Speedway gas station because they also didn't have any. <laughs> of those three, Speedway, the gas station, is the only one that responded. Interesting. At all. Wow. A week later. None, the other two didn't even respond. Not even Pepsi. And I tweeted at Pepsi, too. But it took them Pepsi a week. Pepsi and Pepsi Max. What's that? It took Speedway a week. Um, they posted later that day or the next day. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't, I didn't expect anyone to fix it, but they were like, oh, we're so sorry. We'll talk to our beverage company, your beverage team. You know, can you tell us the store location? And so I told them the store location. They were like, they responded like right after that and said, thanks. We'll, we'll talk to someone. Wow. Never heard from Pepsi, never heard from Pepsi Max. You would think Pepsi would be the one most on it and saying, hey, we're sorry. We really want you to drink our pop. Yeah. <laughs> we want you to consume our product. Um, I, I, I just wonder if they don't have people in, you know, and that's kind of what, well, there's been studies and I love tubes. Sorry, go ahead. Well, just, it makes you wonder, especially because, and I don't know, I'm not a, you, you're going to like yell at me. I'm not a Pepsi drinker. I'm more of a Coke drinker, but I don't know. Okay. And I don't know if Pepsi has, any of these kind of uh, campaigns or anything, you know, like the, the share a Coke campaign and it's got the hashtags and the names and everything like right there You think with a, with companies that do this kind of stuff. And I don't know if Pepsi is doing this kind of stuff. You can help t uh, tell me if they are or not, but especially if they're doing that kind of stuff, how can they not be monitoring social media? How can they not be paying attention to people that are drinking and consuming their product and reaching out to them with stuff like this, you know? I, I don't know, but it, it, for me, it makes for a smaller company. If you just look and set up some hashtags, set up some of your own brands, set up some similar products, um, even track your competitors' names. And I've seen people do it. You can jump in. Um, I've seen recently, like, I don't want to say wars, but like, you know, war of words on Twitter between, you know, I think it was KFC and Wendy's. They have some of the best. Try, trying to win someone's affection by offering them their, their you know, their chicken products, yeah. <laughs> um, which makes really fun kind of, you know, for that person. But it also makes it fun for everyone that interacts or knows of those brands. And they were doing customer service, but also selling at the same time. Yeah. That's very true. Like it, when you're, when you're talking about that, it reminds me of, uh, that one guy that got the nuggets for life that, you know, he got more retweets than Ellen's, you know, ever famous. Oh, yeah. selfie. And so like the power is there, you know, they have the opportunity to watch and you know, they have the opportunity to get so much PR from it. And, you know, bringing this, bringing this down a little bit more 
locally, I guess. I was sharing a story with you earlier. I think I'll just share it now. But again, just showing the power of social media. So I had some, um, you know, my, my wife basically chopped half a tree down and we had this pile of tree and it needed to get hauled off. And uh, so I know this, you know, one of, uh, I've talked about it before in these podcasts before, but the, a local guy here called, you know, the garbage guy. And uh, he has these trucks and he'll come and whatever you have, he'll haul off and he charges by the truckload. And uh, anyway, I posted about it and just talked about it on Facebook and, and a special, you know, neighborhood group. And, uh, you know, he did a great job with it. And I just put it out there that he did. And, you know, easy, same day, affordable, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, anyway, she, there was someone in the group that saw it and was like, hey, you know, we have this granite that nobody wants to haul off. We can't get anyone to haul off. What, does he haul off everything? I'm like, yep, pretty much everything. Just contact him on social media. And there I was thinking, I really hope that he's going to, you know, do, do as good as he does. And so... But he, but he, he, he did, and they do, and that's how they win business. You know, so she reached out to him. They came later on that day, took care of all their granite. She was more than happy to pay them what they charge, and said it was a great deal. And then she talked about it on social media. And then I had other people come up and tell me, "Hey, we're going to use that guy. There's a bunch of there's some projects we have going on, and we just saw that you guys had good interaction with them." And again, this is the power of of good customer service, paying attention to social media. And just the power of it. And again, this is just a small, tiny little group. This is not the far kind of reach that Coke or Pepsi has. But this is also, this is this could be the difference maker in businesses surviving or not it, these it, days. It local allows ones, you, you know what I mean? I mean, you basically were a salesperson for them. And they didn't drop the ball yeah. and they picked it up and they got a client out of it. And they'll probably get more from a word of mouth kind of connecting with social media, customer service, sales, however you want to, you know, break it down. But by just listening and, you know, being aware of what's going on, they captured it. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the lesson that that so many small small to medium business owners need to to understand here. It's it's uh you know, Obviously, we all want to grow and, and, and whatnot, but like just paying attention to those simple little details, you never know when that one right influencer, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, the special influencer or whatnot, but it reminds me of another story. So I have another lady recently, and, and we can share some links to it because it's really cool. And if anyone else wants it done, I'll definitely see again what I'm doing as I'm being a salesperson for someone else. But... Um, there's this lady that I know that makes these really cool stained glass windows and she had posted some stuff and, and I told her, I just mentioned on a comment, man, I'm going to, I'm going to hire you. I'm going to commission you at some point to do the avalanche media logo for us. And well, another one of my friends saw that, you know, doc Shelton and uh, you know, he reached out to her on his own. I had no idea. Those two didn't know each other. He reached out to her and commissioned her. And then uh, my parents show up this weekend with the Avalanche Media uh, in stained glass window, and it's from Doc, and it's done by another one of my friends, and the two of them didn't even know each other. Well, since then, I've had four other people, four other businesses that I'm connected with, saying, hey, can you give me that lady's information? That logo was amazing. That stained glass window with your logo, I want that. Like, can I have that? You know, will you send her to me? And so, again, you know, it's just... I don't know. Social media is cool. And, and, and I don't know, you know, that's, I guess maybe not necessarily a customer service, but it, it is in a way of, of, you know, she paid attention to her social media. She paid attention, you know, she, she had her, her, her settings correct where someone could come in and comment and, you know, she's running a business and she's putting it out there. So I guess I maybe, so. you know, the fact I that think she's doing that right is some kind of customer or, service as well. Um, even Yelp just listening there for when people say good and or bad. Um, to me, that's a, a way of customer service on social media. And you don't like Yelp at all. <laughs> yeah, and, and I like that you brought in Yelp on this too, because, you know, a lot of time, well, <laughs> I I don't, I'm, I'm still mad at them from years, years and years of usage. But um, my, uh, well, 
That should be another episode one day, by the way. <laughs> why we hate Yelp, but why we love it. Now, um, but paying attention on Yelp and, and as a business owner, you know, using it as constructive criticism. Don't get so emotionally attached that, you know, if you're a, a business owner that makes pizza and someone doesn't like your pizza, don't go on a tirade against them and tell them how they're the most stupid customers ever and they don't know what real pizza tastes like. You know what? Understand what they're saying. See how you could do to help them. It reminds me of when I first moved to Arizona from Utah and I ate at this barbecue place in Gilbert, Arizona, and I wasn't happy with it. It was Joe's Real Barbecue. Um, I'm going to put a link to him, um, but, but Joe's Real Barbecue, I, I did a Yelp review and I was like, this was actually horrible. And I didn't like it, and I was very honest of why. And pretty soon, I get a a uh, in the in the messages area, I get a link to a forty dollar gift card that says, "Hey, we're really sorry that we didn't meet your expectations, and that you know you had this experience. Here's forty bucks. Come try it again on us." And so I went back, and it was a lot better that time. It's still not my favorite barbecue, but because they went through that effort. Um, I updated my my uh, original post and was like, hey, you know, it wasn't as bad this time. Some of the issues that I had were better. And I think they went from like a one and me ranting to like a three and a half or a four, me saying okay things. And so that was a simple act of them paying attention to um, their social media. And this was years and years ago, probably like seven or eight years ago. And so, again, these guys have been doing it right for a long time. Um, but again, just paying attention to stuff like that, not attacking anybody, um, keeping your cool and, and using it to using that, that review or that yep. tweet or that whatever as constructive yeah, criticism of how you looking, can do better. Does that make sense? I don't know if it's either for an upcoming trip where I was looking at a restaurant and they get really busy and sometimes the seating is kind of tough, it seems. And some people kind of complain that. You know, it was really kind of tough to sit, blah, 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 blah. But when they talked about the food, the person apologized, said, you know, we do get really busy during those hours. You know, it's to us, that's a good thing. But we don't like that you didn't like the food when you did get it. And even when people said good things, they were responding. But also when the bad, they didn't, they tried to flip everything to a good, positive, but when they couldn't, they did apologize. They said, we're so, you know, sorry. And I didn't read the full thing, but I was just kind of scanning through something. Um, and I saw that and I was like, well, that was pretty slick of them. Um, pretty good little way to handle that. And, you know, it, it, it amazes me the power of, of these kind of sites, these kind of review sites, again, you know, going back to Yelp, I, there was this, this restaurant locally here, the a deli restaurant that was amazing. It had the, these particular owners forever. It was so good. And I think that they sold off a new person, bought them, tried to keep some of their stuff and basically went in and changed the whole menu, but like kept the, the name same, the name the same. And they are basically destroyed now on Yelp. And it's crazy because they had, probably like six or seven years of a good solid five stars, like maybe 4.9. Wow. And the place was amazing. And literally within a matter of months, it was down to like two. And so it's like, that's the power we're dealing with right now. And, and you know, people, most of the time when people are happy, they're not going to go online and do say something more or not when they're mad or pissed off. That's when they're going to go online. And so, you need to make sure that those people that are going to go online when they're happy, you know, that you're giving them as much of an opportunity to write something positive as to those most of them. I would say, I don't know if, if, if I don't have any stats in front of me, but I'm just guessing more people that I, use I Yelp just for normal reviews are going to use it when they're pissed off and they want do a good to, review to every so online, often you know? <laughs> and not just go on when I'm happy whether for anything really. Um, I probably don't leave the good reviews as much as I should. Um, I think I just figure that I keep going back <laughs> and I spend my money. So, you know, that's good. But every so often, um, 
like the, one of my favorite places and it's random. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite places to eat in, um, in Munich is owned by this guy that originally was from Detroit, lived in Chicago and then took his son and his wife and they moved over there and they just opened a restaurant on their own, um, in the last year or two. And he's really cool. And the food is really good. Um, I tried to go there this last time. I went one day, got in, I tried to go back the next day and you know, because they have some good food and because it was lunchtime, they had a line out the door and I was like, darn, can't go back. But I've left them. I go back all the time and I have left is one of those places where I was like, partly. So I remember, um, I did go back and leave a, I left a, a you know, a, a review, but. <laughs> you know, as you're saying that, it reminded me of one, one final customer service uh, uh, issue with social media that I'll leave here uh, in wrapping it up. What well, would be, uh, there's a local barbecue spot here, Little Miss Barbecue, probably the best barbecue that you can get in all of the Phoenix, Arizona area, hands down. But one of the things that I love that they do with their social media is they're always keeping people informed because it is, you know, when you mentioned line out the door, okay. it made me think of these guys. They, if you're not there at 10 o'clock in line for their lunch, I mean, you're not going to get anything by the time they actually open. Yeah. I mean, they're, especially their good stuff. I mean, you can come at any time and get some good barbecue, but like if you're wanting burnt ends or the brisket or just the, you know, the certain ribs that that's going to all be gone before you're even up there. If you're not in line by 10 o'clock. And so, or then you're not even going to get parking if you're not there by at least 1030. And so anyway, one of the things that I love that they do though, is they keep people informed on their social media, letting them know, Hey, we have a hundred pounds of brisket. And so, you know, there's going to be more opportunity for people to come down or, Hey, we're out of this. And so it's just like, if you're following them and you're looking at your feed and you're going through and you're thinking about, Oh, I got a little bit of a late start for lunch and I really want some brisket. I'm scrolling through and I see, Oh, no, nope, they're probably not going to have any or, Oh, Hey, that looks like there might be a chance that I have some. And so that's another positive usage of social media in my Set opinion. That monitor, brands, just listen uh, for people to control and they have the power. Um, so. It's, it, it doesn't Any final thoughts, sir. It doesn't bother me as much when a small business has a, a Twitter profile, but when, but when you're, st when you have stuff scheduled and it's still going out and I've complained and an hour and a half later, you post something, even if it's scheduled to me, that's kind of like a, they don't really care. Um, the big brands, it bothers me, but, um, like whatever, forget them. But yeah. So what, so what we'll do, these are some good points, Dave, and what we'll do, you made me think of something. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll post a couple of the different tools that we like with monitoring social media. I use Tracker, a uh, friend of mine, Andy Bill, disclaimer. Um, it's a great tool product. I don't get anything from recommending it. Um, just his awesome friendship. <laughs> but uh, that's one of the tools that I use for monitoring. And so um, if Dave has any other ones, he'll throw in there as well. But we appreciate you guys taking the, the time to listen to this episode and uh, definitely, you know, we, we practice what we preach. Leave some feedback for us. Go and do a review. Let us know how, how we're doing, how we could do better. If there's uh, certain topics that you want to hear of uh, or hear from us, let us know on any kind of social media. We're out there everywhere. And so um, this is the Business of Digital Podcast for Dave Rohr. I'm Matt Soltala, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys, for listening.